When Tony Hawk's Pro Skater landed big heading into the new millennium, it ushered in a wave of copycats and clones. Everyone from The Simpsons to Disney characters and even original video game franchises felt these effects. But among these knockoff titles, Activision dominated the market launching its brand new Activision O2 sub-label in 2001 with the intention of bringing other big air extreme sports into the mainstream. The first of these being Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX, which we'll be taking a look at today. Now, it goes without question that the goal here was to print as much money as possible and milk this trend until it was bone dry, which, as we all know by now, is exactly what happened. But I mean, just look at this cover! Featuring the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game engine. You know that's the only selling point here, and there is nowhere to hide from that fact. At least they are being open with their intentions, I guess, but that's still such a bizarre thing to promote. That's like if the original Pro Skater game said, featuring the game engine of an underrated Bruce Willis futuristic shooter on the cover. <laughs> it's so weird. But if the goal here was to milk the cash cow, then why was the success of this game completely sabotaged right from the beginning? Pro BMX was released in mid-2001, smooshed in between two of the greatest video games ever made, so players who enjoyed the Tony Hawk games would most likely just wait until Pro Skater 3 released later in the year. But not only that, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX was released on the PlayStation 1 in 2001. And sure, you can play it on the PS2, I suppose, but then how do you explain this shit? A Dreamcast release? In 2001? Five months after the system was discontinued? Some bloody geniuses working over at Activision. Jesus Christ. No wonder Matt Hoffman jumped off of a fucking cliff and killed himself during the intro montage. I just hope that was unrelated to the quality of this game. Developed by Shaba Games, known for their work on various Pro Skater ports, the format here is unmistakable with the rad montage in the beginning, career mode on that classic two minute timer, and we even have a park editor which is no joke, just a complete copy and paste job from Pro Skater 2, but still good to see here. No custom characters though, unfortunately, which means we're stuck with the Pro Riders. Now there are a few faces here that I recognise, but admittedly, I am completely completely out of my depth talking about the BMX world, so let's just start the game. Launching into the Hoffman factory, I love that we actually get a little video before the level loads to get a feel for the type of objectives we'll be completing. Honestly surprised Tony Hawk never picked this up. And thankfully, we're not restricted to the perfectly clean levels either, with a lot of dirt terrain through forests, construction sites and parks mixed into the bunch. Graphically, everything is fine, as you'd expect really, which is a theme that transfers over into the soundtrack as well. It certainly captures the same rebellious feel of the early 2000s, which is nice, but I have to admit, it is missing one very important song. Lights out! Grill Radio! Unfortunately, this game plays more like Pro Skater 1 than 2, with only 5 very basic objectives on each course. Kind of disappointing, especially when the controls are debatably more clunky. This must be due to the bike. Unlike on the skateboard where you can execute flips and grabs very quickly off of the ground, it takes a bit of time to learn here that you've got one button entirely dedicated to massive tricks that require sufficient airtime. Don't get me wrong, it all works, but movement just isn't as fluid or fast enough for this high adrenaline arcade style gameplay in my opinion. Not to mention, some of the more obnoxious things like riding backwards and accidentally doing rail stalls instead of grinds, which results in some ridiculous bails. Whoa, look at him go! See, look at this, you just get stuck on objects, it's a real pain in the ass. Damn, he went flying there! What? 
what am I looking at? All of a sudden, he's a light rail train? The physics in this game can be all sorts of messed up sometimes. It must be that famous pro skater game engine we all love so much. But this can be a total disaster in comparison. Look at this. Is it ever going to end? Well, he's still going. Still going. Ugh, what the fuck, man? Ah, oh, no wonder poor old Matt kamikaze off of that cliff in the intro. It's clear his soul left his body behind a long time ago. Ah, oh, finally. Instead of earning stat points or cash to level up your rider, here we simply get to tweak some of the parts on our bike, like the tyres and handlebars, on top of your selected rider's abilities. Sure, it was unfulfilling maxing your stats over and over, but this is almost pointless because the adjustments are so minute. You do eventually unlock some new bikes with higher stat points, but what's this shit? Why is it just the same bike again and again? Even the maxed out bike you get for beating the campaign looks identical. I mean, could they not have at least put some flames on it, or some pink fairy sparkles? Fucking anything to make it feel like a somewhat special reward. Of course, any pre-existing skill at the THPS games transfers over to this in some degree, but I still find this to be a surprisingly challenging game. Combined with the clunky moveset, some of these levels were just a total butcher job. The more spread out downhill courses tend to be the most fun, as they do a good job at creating distance between obstacles. But this street course in particular is a prime example of the complete opposite of that. There is just no no flow to this map whatsoever, no sensible lines to master, annoying goals that require a lot of climbing and balance which is always frustrating, but there is also no room to build up any speed to get the big air you need in order to nail the big tricks which are your only hope of hitting that 100,000 score mark. And then when you're finally able to do it, it really comes down more to how well you're able to bullshit the controls and take advantage of the game instead Instead of properly mastering it. And the final competition also echoes this with absolutely no clear combo lines, obstacles jammed in on top of each other and this massive dirt track along the outside which seems to drain all of your momentum if you touch it. Safe to say, I had a little cry getting through this one. For getting gold and beating the game, you unlock who else other than Tony Hawk. How do you like that? Well, not much really, given it looks nothing like him. Oh, and now all of a sudden, Tony Hawk gets special bikes that are all different? That just goes to show who the real star of this franchise truly is. It is kind of cool to see, though, how we went from a demo of this game in Pro Skater 2 to the Hoffman Factory actually appearing in the N64 version of the game to finally playing as Tony Hawk in Pro BMX. You can even unlock, or use cheats like me, to get the warehouse and Burnside to play around in as well, which is another neat addition. But hang on, what's this? You can't free skate any of the levels unless you unlock them with that character? Oh, you're kidding me! Why would they do that? Who wants to play through the same game over and over again just to unlock the same levels? It's stupid. You can also unlock the radical BMX Granny, whose special tricks include the gum grab, and she even gets her own special video as well. You guys can keep Spider-Man, I'm simping BMX Granny from now on. All in all, this is a decent little game with okay controls, levels are passable for the most part but are pretty forgettable, accompanied by a decent soundtrack. But for me, it lacks polish. The weird physics at times, weak campaign and total lack of competent rewards is a real bummer that let this game down. A game that ultimately seemed doomed to fail. Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX gets 5 out of 10. Definitely not how you want to launch your brand new O2 label, but you thought I was finished? No. 
Just for an added bonus, let's take a quick look at the portable versions of this game just to see how they compare. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was a surprising success on the Game Boy, so maybe these will save the day. Well, Matt Hoffman's Pepsi BMX on the Game Boy Color is certainly... something of an attempt to capture the console game in this bit-crushed glory, I guess. If you're at all familiar with the portable Pro Skater games, I covered them on Hawktober last year if you're interested. Hot Gen Studios was responsible for the colour port of Pro Skater 3 and both BMX ports, and wow, if I didn't know any better, you could fool me to think I was playing the same game. Level navigation operates almost like a 2D side-scroller, with multiple levels into the background and foreground you can switch between by holding up or down on a ramp. It definitely takes some getting used to, but despite its incredible difficulty, Pro Skater 3 proved that this format can work to create a fairly decent game. The problem here, though, is that the control on the bike is far stiffer than you can ever imagine without playing this for yourself. It takes so long just to simply stop and turn around, but it's also incredibly difficult to judge your own momentum when it comes to doing tricks. So when the objectives are so demanding right from the very beginning of the game, it's incredibly uninviting. Both the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance versions of Pro BMX are very similar in how they play and look, though they feature a slightly different selection of levels. Where the Color has included some random locations like the prison yard and loading docks, all of the levels in the Advance version are actually taken from the console game, so it's far more accurate as a port. We can also transition up or down at any time, which does help to some degree, but navigation is still far too slow and broken. Just look at this half-pipe situation. All I want to do is go down and get out of here, but I have to painfully zigzag my way out. That, along with the reduced time limit, makes a lot of these objectives unrealistic to complete. I also hate how any time you do complete anything in this game, it has to flash you with this obnoxious victory screen. Performing special moves can also be incredibly unreliable most of the time. Instead of going into the air and pressing the combination, here we have to press a direction as we hit the ramp and then do the second bit. But honestly, I got better results just mashing the buttons. Thankfully the left shoulder can be held down to lock you to only moving left or right, which really helps to score more consistently. There is also a dirt track time trial mode where you need to perform tricks to stop the timer from counting down, but in less than 7 minutes you can have this entire thing beaten. So while this version does do a better job, it still doesn't even come close to the quality of the portable Pro Skater games. Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX on Game Boy Advance gets 3 out of 10. And as for the colour version, well, you're just taking the piss out of yourself if you decide to waste your time on this version, so it gets a 2 out of 10. Well, handheld ports aside, the birth of Activision 02 wasn't a total fuck-up, but the entire thing just leaves you wishing you'd spent the time and money playing the real thing. So, let's just hope they can kick things up a notch with the next game in the O2 lineup, Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder. So be sure to join me tomorrow when we take a look, and until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share the video with your friends and on social media. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.